Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Health and Fasting, the series where we're discussing healthy effects of fasting during the month of Ramadan. In this episode, we're going to look at some of the benefits of fasting and we're going to break this down into physical, mental, and social. So let's start with the physical benefits of fasting during the month of Ramadan. So, as we've discussed previously, there are lots of health conditions that we suffer with and that people are prone to have and these are some of the things that we need to be aware of and think about how we can manage these. And there's been lots of evidence and studies carried out on the effects of fasting on the body and health. So we discussed before about weight and obesity and as uh, we know these are big problems and they cause many other complications that are long term and have big effects on the health and well-being of individuals. Now it's been shown that those who start instituting healthy lifestyle changes in the month of Ramadan and are able to continue these for the months after this have long-term effects on their benefit in terms of dealing with and tackling obesity. So this is something that has been proven in research papers and has been shown to be a long-standing effect for those who maintain the healthy lifestyle changes that they've made during the, during the month of fasting. So there has been shown to be decrease in BMI, body mass index, that has been long-lasting and continued for several months, up to 6 to 12 months, in those who've managed to maintain the healthy lifestyle that they started during the month of Ramadan. Also, the effects on blood pressure have been shown to be long-standing as well. So blood pressure is a problem that many people suffer with, and leads to further complications in terms of heart disease and stroke in particular and those who manage to institute healthy changes in their lifestyle during the month of fasting have shown decreases in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure so this is when you have your blood pressure measured you, your GP will give you two values a value say 120 over 80 and the upper value is the systolic blood pressure the lower value is the diastolic blood pressure and this is relates to when your heart is pumping and relaxing. So there have been shown to be decreases in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure in those who maintain a healthy lifestyle going on from the month of Ramadan and there have been other long-term benefits in terms of decreased incidence of heart disease and stroke as a result of people who have decreased their blood pressure due to the healthy changes that they made during the fasting month. Also, cholesterol is another big issue that leads to many problems and is a, is a really major problem, particularly in our communities, in the Muslim community in Britain. So high cholesterol, again, is related with heart disease, stroke, diabetes, lots of major medical problems, but also it leads to things such as fatty liver and obesity. So these are big problems that are related with cholesterol. And what has been shown is that those who institute a healthy lifestyle in the fasting month and are able to continue this for the next few months going forward, when their serum cholesterol has been measured, it has been shown to show a decrease of 5% in total cholesterol, but also a decrease in what we call triglycerides. So triglycerides are a sub-molecule of cholesterol and these are particularly harmful in terms of cardiovascular disease. So there's been a decrease in total cholesterol and what we call triglyceride cholesterol. Also cholesterol is split into what we call HDL and LDL cholesterol. HDL cholesterol is the high density lipoprotein. This is what's called your good cholesterol and we like to see higher levels of this. And LDL is the low density lipoprotein which is the bad cholesterol. This is the one that's related with coronary artery disease and heart attacks. So again, when they've had, when people have shown a decrease in the total cholesterol, they've also shown an increase in HDL and a decrease in LDL cholesterol. All of these changes are extremely beneficial for the patient's health and well-being, particularly with relation to cardiovascular disease and circulatory problems. So these are really beneficial impacts of being able to institute a healthy lifestyle in terms of 
when we do this in the month, month of fasting, and are able to continue these going forward for the few months after that. Also, when we look at evidence from studies, we found that there's been less incidence of angina and coronary artery disease and stroke. So these has shown that there's been a huge impact in terms of the cardiovascular health and well-being of patients. So less incidence of heart attack, less incidence of angina. Both of these are major causes of morbidity and sometimes sadly more mortality. So if we can make these changes in the fasting month and then carry them forward, then we find a huge decrease in angina and heart attack. Turning to other conditions, we've also found that generally blood glucose sugar control improves, but particularly in non-insulin dependent diabetics, i.e. type 2 diabetics, those who maintain the healthy lifestyle changes that have been started in Ramadan show a better increase in their control of their sugar. So what we call the HbA1c, which is looking at your long-term control of sugar over a three-month period. When this has been measured in those who have maintained these lifestyle changes as a result of fasting, they have found that there's been a decrease in the HbA1c and then a subsequent improvement in their control of their diabetes. So we've discussed before the impact of diabetes on health and the long-term problems and complications that are associated with this. So a decrease in HbA1c that can be maintained is a huge benefit to the population as a whole and in the individual in particular. So again, a huge impact that can be achieved by maintaining the healthy lifestyle that you can institute during the month of Ramadan. And overall, looking at obesity and weight, if you can start the change to institute a healthy lifestyle and continue that, then you will see a decrease in the obesity levels in the population and again, all of the problems associated with obesity will decrease if we can hopefully tackle the levels of obesity and start to bring them down. Okay, Turning to mental health problems, there has been a huge evidence in terms of the mental health benefits of fasting. This may sound strange, but what has been shown is that the contact that you have with other people, the communication you have, the time that you spend with your family, all of these things are positive factors in terms of decreasing incidence of depression and anxiety. And depression and anxiety are two major issues that we don't tend to recognize in the Muslim community. We tend to ignore them and brush them under the carpet, but these are really important health issues that need to be considered in the population as a whole, but in the Muslim community in, in particular. But it has been shown that through fasting, the mechanism is not entirely clear, but through the mechanism of fasting, there has been shown to be a decrease in levels of depression and anxiety. And if we can help to tackle these two major problems, then we can improve the overall health and well-being of the population, particularly the Muslim population. And there's been shown to be strong links between physical and mental health. So if someone's mental health improves, then it will have an impact on their physical health they'll feel more energy, they'll feel more levels of satisfaction, they will then start to feel better in themselves, and then physically they'll improve as well. There is no doubt that there is a strong link between physical and mental health, and improvement of one can improve the other. And particularly the other way where we don't often think about it, improvement in mental health can lead to strong positive improvements in your physical health. So a huge benefit from fasting in terms of improving mental health, particularly depression and anxiety. Now turning to social benefits of fasting, there has been evidence that the contact that you have with the community, the time that you spend at the mosque, the time that you spend in prayer and contemplation, all of these have huge societal benefits for the population, for you and your family, the Muslim population and the wider population. There, has been there have been studies by the government that show in the UK the most generous population is the Muslim population in terms of charity and giving to those less well off than themselves and considering needy and worthwhile causes. So this is irrespective of Ramadan. In the UK the population who gives the most charity is the Muslim community. So this is something that we should be extremely proud of and inform every and all people that the Muslim community 
is a hugely generous and giving community because nowadays in the media Muslims are portrayed in a negative light in all avenues so this thing is a fact that's been proven by government statistics so there is no doubt that we are a very giving and generous community and we should celebrate that fact and be proud of that fact and, and be sure that we make other people aware of that. So the societal and population benefits from Islamic charity giving are huge. And it's not just Muslim charities who Muslims give to, we give to all sorts of causes. So there's been a huge evidence that charity giving is a huge part of the Muslim ethos, the Muslim way of life and the Muslim thinking. But in the month of Ramadan, we are even more generous and we give more to more needy causes and more worthwhile institutions. So this is something that has been shown to be hugely beneficial to the population in the UK and the population worldwide. So something that we should be extremely proud of and something we should definitely make sure that we do not stop giving and do not stop this generosity and thinking of those less well off than ourselves. Also, the effect of communal prayers and communal dua, communal supplication has found to be extremely uplifting for the society. So getting together with your family, with your community, whether it's at home or in the mosque or in the center has been shown to be extremely beneficial for the society. So levels of general well-being and satisfaction in the society increase and the effect of prayer, we don't know what the effect of prayer is, but the actual physical fact of coming together and offering prayers has been shown to increase societal well-being, societal happiness and societal satisfaction. So there's a huge impact there in terms of the benefits to your society and your local community. So this is something again we should be extremely proud of. It's not just in terms of giving money, it's in terms of giving time, in terms of giving resources, in terms of giving help. So it's also been shown that in terms of offering time and support to other community members, this is also a really useful and beneficial thing that we can do both for the people that we help and for our own self and well-being. So it has been shown that when you give to others, you have a feeling of satisfaction and this increases your what's called positive hormones. So things like endorphins and such as chemicals such as these, which make you feel better, give you a sense of satisfaction and improve your own mental health and spiritual well-being. So in terms of the benefits of fasting, we've discussed the physical benefits, the mental health benefits, the spiritual benefits and the societal benefits. And I think this is something that we should never forget. It's not just the, f the fact that we're giving up food and drink for a period of 30 days. It's the fact that we can do all of these other things and we should try and abstain from all bad acts. So all of these things, if we can implement them during the month of fasting and try in a small way to continue them after we finish the month, holy month of Ramadan, then that will help us in our own self and our own well-being, but also in those, of, those around us. So if we think, if someone is nice to us, what is our natural inclination? Our natural inclination is to be nice back to them. So if we can just institute that one small change where we are nice to others, speak a kind word to someone, say hello, say good morning to someone, someone you don't even know, someone you see on the train, and just spread that love, spread that goodness, spread that joy, and hopefully in the law of natural uh, karma that will come back to you and you'll be returned that, and you'll see that hopefully society and the population will benefit and it can only be a positive thing. So I hope that you've learned some useful things during this episode and I look forward to seeing you again in another episode where we will discuss more aspects of health and fasting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.